Hey everybody, you are listening and watching the We Are Rising podcast. This is your host, Andrew Benjamin, and I'm joined by MMA Power Couple, who will be both having matches at Rising 26 at the Saitama Super Arena. With us, we got Kyle Ogden and Miu Yamamoto. Uh, Kyle Hi. Ogden takes on Klepper Koik Erps, and Miu Yamamoto, uh, excuse me, Miu Yamamoto has the vacant Super Adam Way match against Ayaka Hamazaki. Thank you so much for uh, talking to me uh, today, tonight in Japan right now. I appreciate it. No, not a problem. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you. Uh, so the first question I got to ask is, I think you both are in quarantine right now. How is that going? Are you guys uh, getting cabin fever or are you guys, you got, how are you guys surviving? Yeah. Man, it's, it's rough. We're just trying to make do with, the, with what we got here. So we're here for... Um, a couple more, um, about another week or so, but um, we're, we're trying to make the best of what's going on right now. We're just training, you know, whatever we can do here, running, you know, pad work, but um, it's good. It's going. We're, we're already all the hard training's done, so we're just trying to, you know, just fine tune everything else. Okay. And so are you two just training together or is there like, do you, are you allowed to have teammates come in and train? How's that whole work thing work out? Yeah, we have um we have Erson, our uh, her her son's coming by and helping me out, so that's been pretty good. So it's been beneficial for us, and then um I'm helping her out too, just just coaching her and just doing situations with her as well. So we're still getting in some good training. How's it feel to be both competing at on the New Year's Eve show uh, together and in, uh, in two big fights? I'm I'm just super excited, you know. Like- me and husband and Kim. That was like a, my um, not goal, but kind of like a dream of. But mm-hmm. this guy has to, you know, like coaching. coaching yeah, and at the same time. It's gonna be like so uh-huh. nervous. He always get nervous in my fight. So. Uh-huh. I mm-hmm. hope he, yeah, he'll be okay. Yeah, <laughs> for me, this is my first time in um, uh, mm-hmm. Saitama Arena on new year's eve so it's a it's a big event for me she's been through it a couple of times so i'm super mm. stoked for it. just just fighting the pan in general is just just amazing man the the mm. crowd the fans the energy is just is always good uh kyle for yourself how's it feel to be one of the few uh uh gaijin foreigners on the card man that was that was uh it's pretty crazy we didn't i didn't think it was possible um until they knew that i was actually courting her then they're like hey why don't you just jump on this card? Super last minute call. I uh, say, yeah, I'm super down. Um, so it just it's just a blessing just to even be here and just compete um, outside of you know you know everything all the, besides all the stuff going on. I'm so able to compete and do what I love. So mm-hmm. uh, it's a blessing. Uh, Mia, I, I wanted I wanted to clarify something. So uh, it was the reason why that uh, you didn't fight in any of the cards uh, up until now is because of uh, you have Canadian citizenship. Is that correct? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, uh, what what is it like in Japan right now? Yeah, or how are people like have adapted to what's going on in the world? Have you uh, like how's how's like the atmosphere just in general? There, I mean, I mean, Corona thing. Is, yes, yes. Like, oh, okay. So they're wearing a mask, but not. It's pretty much a business is open. Yeah, it's open. As it's a different than a... Um, Guam. It's Guam not... is a lockdown. We haven't been locked down. Yeah, it's but, not like yeah. in Guam or in the U.S. where it's like outside dining or I think everywhere now it's just like everything's open. Yeah. Almost like it's operating like back to normal. Well, mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, I also got to ask, how does, how does a romance blossom in the mma world how does that happen i don't know it's i don't know is it love at first uh love at first uh takedown i don't know how, how is this how, how I don't is think it? That for me i i saw her do a high crotch into a throw and then i just fell in love off of that you know i was like damn i didn't know a girl can do that so i was like damn i'm gonna freaking propose that's, to this girl that's a girl can do that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I was like just watching her train and I was like damn I just never yeah. seen her seen anyone look so smooth so then I was like you know what right after that takedown I just got on my knee and proposed oh really oh, so- <laughs> yeah actually he did <laughs> um okay so uh I mean so there's very few uh power couples uh that are, that are, that are like in MMA you got Kilburn Melendez and his wife um I'm not so sure Pat Barry rules Nama Yunus 
Uh, oh, yeah. I, I don't know if they're married or what, uh, but I know that they're in relationships with someone. But how, how, like, how does a marriage uh, in MMA? How does that work? I mean, like, do you guys just train together at home or when you go to the gym? How uh, how does that relationship differ or how's it become just like? We, we try and separate, you know, um, our relationship with with mm-hmm. training. So when we're when we know what it takes to become like great athletes. So when it's when it's um coming down to training and and just being serious it, that's all it's about but when we get home it's you know back to being a um, lovey-dovey and affectionate and <laughs> um you know just taking care of our, our kids and our little son chamizo <laughs> yeah is he, is he planning to uh go into uh, mma at some point oh he's uh he's a french bulldog just uh oh <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we have a, another son that's uh, the super talented kid, but uh, he wants to do everything. Yeah, he wants to do golf, baseball, MMA, everything. Uh, speaking of marriage, I, I think you guys got married in January, if I'm correct, right? No, July, July. Oh, Jan- oh, excuse me. Excuse me. My apologies. I'm. Mean, what I, were you? July, June or July. Okay. Uh, how did the wedding, how did you coordinate the whole wedding thing because of the coronavirus? Was there even like anything? Uh, we didn't even have a reception. We were tr- planning to do the reception and everything in like October. We were hoping everything was going to calm down, but uh, yeah. nothing happened. We just did everything in court. I mean, not in court, but we just did the the whole, uh, all the documents. But mm, I'm sorry to hear uh, that. We had a honeymoon. Yeah. So we just had a straight, went straight to New York and just had a honeymoon instead. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, so, well, you know, maybe, you know, when things get better, you can actually like do just like a uh, ceremonial, you know, yeah. thing yeah. to make it up. Um, uh, so uh, actually, we do have some fan questions. I'm just going to go right in before uh, we talk about your fights. Uh, our first question is from a uh, listener, Gentleman's Combat, that Gentleman's Comba. And this is for you, Kyle. He wants to know how you got uh, offered those first uh, few fights in Pancras. Um, the, uh, your uh, fights. I think you had about five or six fights in Pancras, I believe. Yeah, um, I got offered. Um, I believe I was fighting in PXC. And um, I was I already had a, or a Guam and, and or at least my head coach and a couple of guys from uh uh, Japan and Pancreas are kind of connected. So they just offered me like, hey, ask how wants to fight in Pancreas. They got this. And um, the, once I got my foot in the door, they just kept asking me to fight. In. So it was pretty cool. I got close with the matchmaker, uh, Shin. So that was pretty cool. Mm. Um, and uh, we have a question for you, Miu, uh, from uh, Brit Rest Can't Die It Multiplied at AEW is Horrible. And he wants to know about your uh, Joshi career or, or your brief Joshi career. And he wants to know what your thoughts are on Joshi Pro Wrestling uh, currently, if you watch it. Um, do you watch uh, Joshi? Uh, I was a big fan of them when I was a little. And I was, I was watching them and... I still, yeah, I still love to watch, especially like a WWE, you know. Oh, wait, talking about WWE, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Joshi. No? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, for, like for wrestling, right? Like a WWE yes. kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I love it. And me and, you know, Kanako Murata, our goal is to be a diva mm-hmm. in WWE. That's mm-hmm. our goal. <laughs> That's what uh, you always talk about. I know. And also, for those that don't know, you were on a Big, I think the, the biggest uh, female wrestling, women's wrestling show, Joshi wrestling show back in 94, all of the All Japan Women's Big Egg show at the Tokyo. Yeah, Tokyo Dome, yes. I'm I, did, I didn't do uh, pro wrestling. We, I just showed uh, wrestling, the Olympic style wrestling. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Was there, were you at all offered anything by, by All Japan uh, around that time to, to do something for Joshi? Yes, I got offered a couple of times, but I was, still yeah, still competing like a wrestling. So, um, yeah, I had to say no. Yeah. Were you ever at all interested in doing pro wrestling or now nah, you, you always uh, want to go no, into pro? Not right now, <laughs> but maybe we'll talk about with Canico. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> No, because I can't. I can't do that. All the you know backflip and stuff. I yeah. 
I'm kind of scared. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. So let's yeah. let's well, let's talk about your fights at Ryzen 26. Kyle, I'll start with you. You're taking on Clever Coik Erps, uh, Brazilian, uh, at the, from the Bonsai Gym. Trains with the Souza brothers. I think about 21 submission wins to his uh, to his resume. Interestingly enough, though, you have never been submitted or finished. So um, when I, when I look at your record, uh, I see somebody who, as the fight goes on, it favors you. Because mm-hmm. also uh, with him, I looked at Earp's record. He only he has lost uh, about three or four. He's about uh, lost. Four or five times, I believe, yeah. And uh, a few of them are by decision. So do you think as a fight goes on that it will favor you more than it will favor him? Uh, Yeah, for sure. Um, He's a finisher for sure. Um, But um, I feel like I'm more technically sound than he is. He has great jujitsu, but I'm not intimidated or threatened by his jujitsu. I'm comfortable. I'm a black belt as well, so... I'll be comfortable on the ground if it does happen to go there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, w- uh, how do you? So, did you train more submission defense for a fight like this, or was it kind uh, of business as usual? Uh, the training camp was short, so I only had one week in Guam to actually prepare for any type of, you know, like grappling or anything like that. But as soon as I knew that that was my opponent, I immediately got back into just doing strict jujitsu just so I can. You know, just be comfortable. You know, t- uh, jujitsu is all about like timing and movement, and and I just wanted to make sure I was back um, into like jujitsu shape and then full on MMA. But I've been sparring and training with the guys back at home, so but nothing really different in regards to like preparing for his kind of jujitsu. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, with with this, so you only have one week to prepare. I mean, uh, how, how how does how how do you prepare one week for a fight? I just like. I see that I'm always I'm always training, so I'm always active. I'm not mm-hmm. fight training, but I'm always in shape. I, I my weights always. I eat clean. I eat healthy. Um, yeah, I kind of live a healthy lifestyle, and then I'm on constantly training almost every day. She was prepping for a fight, so while she was training, I was training too. Um, but yeah, so one week just to figure out who my opponent was is all I needed, and I would love to have more time, but I'm just got I just got to make the best of what I had. Mm. Yeah, kind of got always ready. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's actually very unusual. Most fighters outside of camp tend to get very out of shape, tend to not be healthy at all. So, um, what do you think about fighters that are just like that? That as soon as their fight's over, they're just like, "I'm going to the barbecue grill. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna gain back my fifty pounds." Out of camp. <laughs> is that something that you just you don't do, or is it? I, I, I splurge for sure. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, there's a balance, right? I can't just stay healthy my whole time. But I splurge a bit. I eat kind of messy here and there, but I always um, trying to tone down. It's all about mm-hmm. balance and training and, um, you know, just trying to put everything together. Um, mm. I feel like at a higher level, the guys that, I don't think the guys that are at a high level do that. You know, they probably splurge here and there, but for the most part, they're actively training. That's the only way they're going to progress, right? So, they mm-hmm. gotta make sure they. There's that saying, right? You gotta. Um, you can't get ready if you stay ready, right? So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also want to get your comments on uh, on on your opponent. But like besides his jujitsu, have you been able to watch his stand up or any other yeah, of? He's a decent all time fighter. He's a. He could he could get aggressive. He's uh he's experienced man. Twenty five and five. That's a lot of spot. Thirty fights. It's a lot of fights. So he's super experienced. I know it's not going to be an easy fight. Mm-hmm. For sure, it's going to be super exciting. It's going to be a scrap. Um, just, I'm just super excited just to get in there with him and share the cage and share um, share the sport that we love, man. And I'm um, just super excited to just compete again. I didn't think I was going to compete until next year. And then when they offered me, I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm super down. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Actually, I want to ask you about that as well. So, yeah, it's been uh, – I think the last time you competed uh, in general was uh, for the uh, Ryzen back in February or – Yeah, March? February. Yeah. Uh, and so do you, do you believe that that cage rust or ring rust is a, is a factor? I don't know how long you've ever, uh, how long, uh, you've, uh, had breaks in between fights, but do you think, uh, I think uh, it could be a factor, uh, depending on, it's kind of, I feel like it's a mindset kind of thing, right? If you believe that it's, it's something that's going to affect you, then it probably will. But if you mm-hmm. believe that you're, you're training all the time and, and you're constantly active and you, you don't let that bother you, then I don't think it would be a factor. But it could be depending on the type of mindset. So 
if I go in there thinking like, damn, I haven't fought in a while. I don't know how I'm going to move. I'll probably hesitate and not do the things that I want to do. But I go in there confident, knowing that I can, I can, I'm confident in everything I've done to practice, everything I've done in training camp and letting the technique fly. Um, I feel that it, and that ring rust won't even apply. Mm-hmm. We also have another uh, question from Urkel Cavalera at you. Cavalera. I don't think that English is his first language, so I'm going to try to say his question as best as I can. And um, I, I guess he's asking if you think that this fight can lead to a title shot um, uh, with a win. Uh, this will be. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. I think I think it's possible, man. This guy is uh, supposedly a guy that's coming in that was supposed to beat uh, Mikuru. So, mm-hmm. and he's uh, like uh, shoots. He's a big name in Japan. So I think it's possible if I do beat this guy, it is uh it might be in title contention. But um right now I'm just focused at the task at hand. So and uh, have you have you seen how how powerful the 145 division has become in Ryzen and just like it like from what it was a year ago and to what it is now? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of tough guys now, so it's super stacked. So just super excited just to see the sport grow and even Ryzen, the competitors are just becoming more and more um, high-level profile fighters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miu, um, your fight, uh, super atomweight uh, title against Ayaka Hamazaki. How do you feel to be fighting for the title um, from where you started? You know, you didn't, yeah. it's, you didn't lose, you didn't win your first three fights. Then mm-hmm. you made a turnaround in your career. And now you're fighting for a title. How do you feel that you've come this far? Oh, I know I didn't have a good start and then I lost like your um what three, four, five, four time, what a five time. But um yeah, we, I'm kinda um I didn't think that fast to reach title, but um I don't really think about title. I'm just happy that I get to fight with one of the best, you know. So mm-hmm. I'm very honored and I really respect her career and her experience, but I just want to, I'm, I'm super, I'm super excited. I'm nervous, but it's a good excited. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, how did you go up there? How did you, did you have enough time to prepare to, uh, for this fight as well? Um, um, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. She had a I lot of time. Like, yeah. Cause time. during the, Lockdown, I did a lot of um, technical training, like practice. So I got, I think I'm more, I mean, it's good. I got more skills. Yeah. yeah. More skills Level that I've developed up, yeah. during the quarantine. So that was a really good time to have um, quarantine and, yeah. So. So uh, well, for this fight, um, I, Hamzaki is one of the best submission grapplers uh mm-hmm. at adam weight i would even say probably just an mma in general uh she's one of the best uh wh- did you focus on submission defense mainly for this fight um as ba- because you're, you're good at the wrestling you're good at, you're good at stand up but uh you know like we said you're in your first two fights uh oh, they were losses by submission we you want to make sure that you don't get submitted again so was that like the biggest thing you wanted to pay attention to in this fight not the biggest thing, but we, um, of course, we train for um, defense too. But also, I'm trying to um, finish this fight too. You know? mm-hmm. like, I never have like a finish, like, always like a fight for like a three rounds. So, mm-hmm. um, defense, offense, both. Mm. Actually, I also want to add to that uh, as well uh, uh, your wins, none of them are by finish. But what mm-hmm. is interesting is that when I watch you, it almost mm-hmm. seems like you train to go all three rounds because you can outlast your opponent. Is that something that you do? Is that you you train to almost, I guess, drag your opponent around uh, and make and make them and make them survive uh, three rounds that they may not be able to survive, and that you can't just because you're so athletic. I mean, that's not my plan for sure because mm-hmm. I want to finish it fast if, it was, yeah. if I can. If I could, but I have a, I have a good cardio. Mm-hmm. That's what I can say. So I'm not scared. I'm not worried about like an old full round, you know. So, but you know, better to finish fast. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> right? uh, 
uh actually can you, so do you do you just genetically have great cardio or do you <laughs> always train cardio how is that work out? i don't know i just like uh, maybe mentally physically both i have a uh, i always have a good cardio because <laughs> mm. also you know i also never i rarely ever see i think i can't recall you ever sweating in in a ring unless i'm unless i'm <laughs> really? I mean, you just, you don't seem to 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 like because there are some people who, as soon as they get in the ring, you could just they're, they're not getting tired, but they're just sweating. They're just you know the lights, the atmosphere. I think it gets them, but they're not like oh. tired. But you seem just seem to be calm. You seem mm -hmm. to to uh, take everything in. Is mm -hmm. uh, is uh, is that uh, is that just because you know you've 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 basically been in the public eye for so long? You're just used to the public uh, watching you do what you do. Ah, uh, maybe that too. And then wrestling, because wrestling always, you know, go, 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 go in three minutes. Mm. That's why, because MMA kind of, you can just, you know, catch your breath. So I guess, mm -hmm. so right now. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. Mm. But when I'm training, like I'm practicing, I sweat a lot. Okay. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Um, and so with this fight, would you, um, you have to agree. It's probably you would say the most important fight of your career, right? So far. Yeah. Um. Okay. So what? What would a this title win? What would it? I know you mentioned that that you you're more interested in fighting Ayaka. It, that that's that's more important. But what would the title win mean to you, uh, as an MMA fighter? Oh yeah. Um. After I got my belt, of course, I'm gonna show my brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, he's the one like I believe in the whole time even like you know I I kept a lot losing but he's still like man you're you're the you waste not gonna any other girl so just believe in yourself mm -hmm. when you when you go into the ring do you still feel the presence of your brother um like in your corner or like near you did you just do you feel like his his spirit is just like with you in every fight that you're in i when i'm fighting no i don't feel any because i'm always focusing but before i get in the ring i always try like you know connect him like i'm not i'm talking to him and then of course he uh, he hurt me and he's watching me over so that's that's enough mm-hmm mm -hmm. Um, and just in case anybody doesn't know, uh, uh, Kid Yamamoto, brother of me, uh, me, is your brother and one of the greats. We are a big fan of, of his. Um, uh, I actually also want to ask uh, about, uh, I noticed that you're wearing Crazy B Spike 22, I think. Um, mm -hmm. is, uh, is a crazy, I, there's just rumors about Crazy B right now because we a, a number of fighters removed their... Yeah thing from their profile whatever is is that just like nothing going on or is it just like a new management is there anything that you comment on that um this one and maybe i should like you talk maybe after the fight because i'm going to focus on fight there is some um and i would just say uh all the fighter has right to um to where they want to train at so mm -hmm. i just yeah I just respect that what they want to do. That's okay. All. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, how has Spike Twenty uh, Two mm -hmm. been uh, a positive for your camp? Uh, how, like, just like, what is how's how is Spike Twenty Two different from, say, a Crazy B? Like, what's like the atmosphere? Like, how's that? How are the two different? Um, what's the different? I just um need my coach here, right here. Mm -hmm. It's about the same. Uh, <laughs> it's it's the people that crazy me. They're they're good people. The guys, Guam, Guam's so small, so everybody's really close. We're close connected, so everyone's like a family there. You know, the guys that we train with are also our best friends too. You know, so yeah, when we see each other, we're family. family. Yeah. Guam's so small, you know, so um, when we do train together, I consider the guys that I'm training with my brothers as well. My coach mm -hmm. is one of my best friends. My training partners again are mm -hmm. my, my are my best friends, and they're mm -hmm. just we're just a tight group man and i feel that we all share the same dream and mm -hmm. try and help each other push each other to mm -hmm. get at you know at the level where we're at right now so mm -hmm. just all love will you two will you two be in either of your corners uh for your respective fights or is that just not going to logistically work out uh i would be in hers because she 
co-main, so <laughs> more main. So I'll be on the undercard, and I'll be watching my wife um, get the title and cornering her entire side. Mm-hmm. I, 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 uh, 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 were you able to bring a full camp with you to this uh, to this show? Like, is, uh, is uh, Frank Camacho coming coming be in your corner as, as yeah, well? No, we weren't able to bring anyone in. So yeah, the thing visa, was, yeah, it's yeah. all working visa. So I was only going because the only reason why I think I'm able to fight is because I was supposed to corner her. Or I'm actually was cornering her. And mm-hmm. since I'm already going, they were like, hey, just jump in on the card. And yeah, the card they're right already now. working for a visa. Um, I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, has Ryzen said it to any, uh, either of you, um, that they can bring you in for 2021? Or do they tell you, you know, we'll have to wait and see just how things go? No, we haven't right now had any discussion about 2021 right now. It's just this fight. Yeah. Uh, same, thing, right. same thing with you, Miu? Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, and uh, so I, I know, uh, Kyle, you did say that you're just focused on this fight, but uh, uh, we there is a, a champion at 145. I mean, eventually, do you want to eventually be, be able to say that you're both a married couple that, that hold titles? You know, man, that, would, that, what? Would be, that would be awesome, man. Um, the guy that just, the guy that just beat Mikuro, is he, is he the champ now? Yep, uh, Yutaka Saito. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be man. If if I beat um, Clover and they offer me a fight with him, I'll be more than happy to take it, man. I know we can yeah. talk about the, our story to my grandkids. Yeah, that'll be awesome. <laughs> Mm, I, and um, just curious, you know, you did mention Ersan before. Um, how, how's he doing? Uh, uh, is he going to uh, be? Is he? Will he be in your corners by by any chance as well? Yeah, person yeah. uh, will be in our corners. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, hopefully, we get to see him again in the ring as well. You know, um, he's always exciting to see in the ring. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> and and uh, so, uh, what, any plans for twenty twenty one or for New Year's Eve of uh, after the show? No plans yet. We got a. Um, we just. Uh, I, I leave on the first or second. So right now when we come to Japan, we just love going out and just checking all the coffee spots here, eating, eating burgers, sushi, you know, just enjoying the food, craft beer, you craft know, I'm beer. big on craft beer. So <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, once I'm done, you know, just do a little bit of that and then go home, maybe take a week off or three days and then right back into the gym. Mm-hmm. Oh, you say craft beer. I, I usually Japan is not known for, you know, you got your Sapporo, got your acai you got your kirin uh what re- beer recommendations do you have for dude, there's a bunch of spots here dude that uh offer there's a spot uh slot shop slot shop they're super badass uh, there's a bunch of craft beer spots here that is really good um so every time i come here that's like one of the things coffee and craft beer checking out every spot and just mm-hmm. visiting all these spaces so you'd be surprised that craft culture here is pretty big mm-hmm. when it comes to craft beer uh, speaking of coffee, I believe you own a coffee shop as well, right? Coffee slut. Yeah, coffee slut, yeah. <laughs> Where did it's you get? Guam. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, in Guam, it's called Coffee Slut. Yeah, I Dirty my it. coffee is what it's, is our is our is our logo, our slang. It's how do you? Where did that name come from? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, our, we like to joke, and there's three owners. Right, one of my. Uh, one of two of my best friends, right? His name's Melker Mandabusa and uh, Justin Benaventi. And our friend Melker always likes to say there's the reason why we came up with it is because uh, two of uh, two of the owners love sluts and one of them love coffee. So we put us three together, we call each other coffee sluts. But yeah, that was just a joke, man. Yeah. Um, our boy just, you know, he just loves coffee so much. And, mm-hmm. you know, we all love coffee so much. We went out to like Europe or I took a whole like Euro trip and just checked out all the coffee spots. Mm-hmm. Just got inspired by everything out there. And, um, you know, we came back. We're like, damn, bro, we love coffee. Like, let's just fucking call our spot Coffee Slut. So we, we ran with that name. And you're like, you know what? Guam's not ready for this. I don't think people are, you know, we're so like timid. Like, we don't know if Guam's going to uh, accept co- the name Coffee Slut. You know, our island's so small. There's, it's like, damn, it might be a little scary. We might not even sell it to anyone. Or pe- kids might not want to come into the shop. Uh, right now, like, too, it's a it's a big attraction, so it's pretty cool. We just oh my kids are worried about their coffee. I've been dropped my daughter at at her private school, 
in our coffee slab van, you know, so <laughs> that's so funny. I'm trying to make yeah, it the norm. We're trying to make it the norm. That's so funny. That's so funny. <laughs> Is, there was no issue with like, I don't know, getting a permit for the name like that or anything. Uh, they, they were uh, uh, that's so it funny. So fun. But it was so funny when we we're trying to get the licenses. They're they're like, hey, is anyone here for? Is it coffee? Smart. Like they don't want to pick <laughs> it when I was picking up the licenses. They don't want to say. They don't want to say the name slut. So then I was like, yeah, I'm here with coffee slut. Oh, that's too funny. That's too funny. Oh, oh yeah, we have fun. like our our cups, our sizes. So when you order. The, the bristas or the girls will ask you like, hey, are you feeling friendly, flirty, or slutty? Like that's depending on the sizes. So you want a small, medium, or large. So it's called oh. like friendly, flirty, or slutty. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> and here's the, you know what the funny thing is? I would be able to remember that. You see, I can never, when I go to Starbucks, I can't remember which is a small, which is a large, which they call like tall. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. whatever. You just want to make it easy, you know? Like, yeah. hey, well, these guys won't like forget that. I slutty today. <laughs> Oh no! Exactly. Yeah. Just uh, I, I. That would you know. I'm. Uh, that, that just it just encapsulates perfectly. I'm feeling flirty <laughs> today. I'm feeling what? What's the second one? I'm sorry. Uh, friendly, flirty, or slutty. I'm feeling friendly today. I'm feeling flirty. I'm feeling slutty. I think that 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 sells itself. <laughs> you know, tall, tall, whatever the Starbucks does. I I can never figure out which it is. <laughs> and what? So what's like? What's like the big? Uh, what what's like what's the best coffee or type of coffee? like do you guys do uh like black co black coffee mochas cappuccinos like what's no, the we, best we specialize in uh, cold brew so mm. our everything is all cold brew coffee mm. and we're like the first nitro coffee like straight nitro bar so everything that we have is all on nitro it's on tap and uh cold brew mm. so, mm -hmm. so specializing really smooth uh, uh, do you guys work behind the counter sometimes, or how's that? How's that uh, thing? Sometimes, or sometimes we're behind the counter, but no, we're just mostly just, um, you know, roasting or brewing, oh, yeah. or but we have our we have a bunch of girls that are behind the counter. Um, I'm just drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so, uh, any, uh, so like with your uh, respective fights come off, Kyle, I'll start with you. Um, I just want to give you an opportunity, uh, to, uh, say any last comments you want to about your fight coming up, uh, to your opponent, Ryzen 26, anything else that comes to mind for is yours? Uh, man, uh, nothing, nothing, nothing too, um, crazy, but, uh, just, just super excited just to compete again, man. I, I, just being in the ring and just doing what I love is just very special to me, man. Uh, we're missing the holidays. Our kids are home by themselves. You know, this whole COVID thing that's going around, you know, not a lot of people are able to travel or even do anything. So the fact that we're coming in to compete and into an international spot mm -hmm. and just do what we love is just big for me, man. And, you know, I'm representing a, a small island from Guam and this is big for us. But not only for the island, it's really big for me too, man. I, I'm coming off a two fight losing streak. And just, I got to go back in there and get that W and bring it back home and, you know, make, make uh, my family and make our the island proud, you know. Mm -hmm. So super stoked, man. And just, uh, Clever said he's going to finish me like 100%. So I'm excited to see our jujitsu scrambles. And then also just, uh, you know, it's not just jujitsu, it's a mixed martial arts. So. Just hope mm. he's ready. I hope mm -hmm. I get 100%. It's 100%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, Miyu, yourself? Um, yeah, it's going to be super exciting fight for sure because um, she has like a all-rounder. She's a very good um, MM fighter and uh, I'm good enough, strong enough to have like a good fight and then I'm win the title. <laughs> uh and uh before you before you guys go off i also want to give you an opportunity to plug uh sponsors your team oh, oh GM, social media wh whatever yeah. else you got, whatever else you gotta plug um man just shout out to our team man crazy beast by 22 man all the people that have been supporting us our yes. training partners uh you know our, our boy here um uh our friends here in, on mm -hmm. the in japan just thank you wow. just for having us Canada, Swan, Canada. Japan, and um, yes. uh, Fudo, 
what is it? Fudoshin, the like, those guys, team, our and... friends have been helping us with jujitsu too, man. Um, yeah. Coffee slide, just providing us our coffee. Mm -hmm. um, Boca box to cross your lady stone. Mm -hmm. Those guys yeah, and just yeah, the village shop. <laughs> so many. <laughs> so but many, yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you, my families and yeah. yeah. Look, do you have any social media as well that you want to post? Oh, YouTube, oh. Instagram, and YouTube. YouTube, my YouTube channel. I I started. Um, last june yeah june yeah so subscribe pretty good yeah. 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 yeah actually kyle uh do you ever plan to start a youtube channel since that seems to be a trend among <laughs> the may fires or are you just uh you're just gonna uh siphon off of uh me use uh youtube yeah. Yeah. he's my he's my I'm a, like, I'm a, producer I'm a director yeah I'm director i'm, I'm a in director. director yeah he's like a standing right there and <laughs> yeah no, just, all the, just focusing all the... on the coffee shop right now and mm -hmm. and fighting and then i'm also a full-time employee mm -hmm. um at bank of guam so yeah he's a banker so. oh shit <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, so if I ever need come after a little later, <laughs> so if I ever need coffee or financial advice, you seem to be the guy to go. Ah, yeah, just hit me up. <laughs> By the way, I got is that a is that a Dragon Ball Z shirt you're wearing? Yeah. Super oh my god, he's like so otaku. It's like an otaku level. It's really. Oh, uh, he's an otaku. Uh, <laughs> or a weeaboo. Weeaboo is that is uh that's a term for somebody who's like obsessed, a, a Western person who's obsessed with uh Japanese culture. Oh really? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm a I'm not a big anime fan, but I'm a big Dragon Ball fan. I'm a so Naruto. I don't, I don't so watch like... any other like anime, just straight Dragon Ball. It's about mm -hmm. it since I was like seventh grade or. I mean, sorry, like fifth grade or something. That must cause some arguments. You being a Rito <laughs> fan, you know. and uh, you being a DBZ fan. Uh, no, wow. not deep. You know, deeper than. They don't. They don't understand. They don't understand. <laughs> but we can all. Uh, hopefully, we can all agree that Pokemon is the is the. Top anime. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Mew. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And uh. <laughs> For everybody that wants to check out Kyle, uh, Kyle Ogon and uh, Miyu Yamamoto, both fighting the same card, husband and wife, you can check out Ryzen 26 right on the Ryzen Live uh, website uh, if you're international. If you are in Japan, I think the show is sold out, I believe. So you can't even get tickets to it now. I think it did s just sell out. Yeah. Um, but yes, if you are international, um, you can watch it uh, through their streaming uh, platform. And uh, again, Thank you so much for talking to me, both of you. And uh, yeah, you know, both of you, good luck in your fights. Uh, hopefully you both can come away with wins, you know, celebrate with some craft beer or, or you know, you know, just feeling slutty. Have, have a, have a uh, cold <laughs> brew after. Thank you. We'll do. We'll thank do. We'll do. Okay. Thank you very much to both right, of you. Yeah. Take care. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Bye.